Welcome to Tech Talk 2020 with Sanjay Parker, the show where we get smarter together. I'm your humble tech host, Sanjay Parker, and I'm here with Mike Carswell to talk about all things technology related for your home, your business, and your life. We've got an exciting show for you today, and it's part of a three-part series on personal technology. Today, it's all about cutting the cord on cable and saving money. And my name is Mike Carswell. Glad you guys joined us this evening here on Tech Talk 2020. Welcome you to 30, 1330 AM W. Uh, oh. Man, I'm struggling tonight. WINT, we have a crowded studio, man. This is so cool. We'll introduce the folks later on. But WINT, 1330 AM, we are here for you tonight to talk about technology. Anybody out there we want to talk about cable, we'll talk about it tonight. Sandy, you got some surprises for me. I do, I do. And, you know, just to be clear for today's show, when we say cut the cord, we mean figuratively, not to literally cut the cord on your cable box. That would not save you much money. And, in fact, that would probably prevent you from watching your favorite shows. So what we mean by cutting the cord is finding alternative means and cost-effective ways to actually get the shows and content you want without a cable TV subscription. I know one little cable joke I heard one time. There was a... <laughs> Uh, this is a true story. There was a woman I know that was helping another lady clean her home, and and she was while she was cleaning the home, she had uh, you know the television there. She goes, "Oh, uh, Agnes, do you have cable?" And she just looked at her and she goes, "No, but in the basement I have some rope." <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank I you. wish we had a, a cymbal crash because okay. that would just be. Perfect. We need to get a, a yeah snare drum for that. We'll do that. So. <laughs> Here's the facts, okay? We know that the cost of cable subscriptions have incrementally gone up, right? I just found out that my parents are spending about $140 a month for cable and, and phone and no internet. A lot of people are sick of the games where cable companies are giving you an introductory price for 12 months and then raising the rates every few months. So we know that this is something that you know people are even the older generation it's something they're looking for alternatives we know that the younger generation they view this as on-demand content and my family we've personally saved about eighty dollars a month or a thousand dollars a year by doing some of these measures while still getting all the content that we need yeah but you spend that thousand dollars heading to starbucks every other day right I don't go to Starbucks. Okay. Every but, other but on, 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 on the cable notes, you know, I, I appreciate that. I know that I try to go on the cheaper side. I do not have all the, the bonus channels that some folks have out there. I just kind of stick with the basic. But I, I think I pay a hefty fee. I mean, we won't get into my specific bills. But I do know that uh, the Internet component to my cable subscription is why I have it. Um, I have the fastest that I could possibly have in my home, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very, very dependable. So I really kind of look at that. And the cable is, is extra. I mean, I mean, I think I'm paying a little bit more than I want to. So help me uh, spend less, Mr. Sanjay, here. Let's learn this together. Well, let's look at some facts. We always like to step back and look at some stats. So one of my favorite sites is Statista. And I'm looking at the number of households not paying for TV services in North America. Okay. So in 2010, so this is kind of like the opposite type of metric. It's how many households are not paying for cable, right? Because we knew cable had quite critical mass, you know, at the turn of the century. But here's how many uh, houses are not paying for cable. 18.9 million in 2010. Okay. That number has gone up in 2012 to 20.7 million. It's projected by 2021 that 33.3 million households in the North America will not have any kind of uh, cable TV services. So it's almost double from 2010. So it's quite significant. Mm -hmm. This cost-cutting movement is large. And in fact, younger generations who are used to on-demand content um, are just not signing up for cable service. So people are heading somewhere. Because I, I would say that we are a, a, a nation or a culture completely addicted to looking at screens, big, big, small, big screen or small screen. And, you know, it amazes me how many flat screens there are out there now, zillions of them. But we're so used to, to watching and getting information via a screen. So um, help me out here. So if people are leaving cable, which is we've always known as to be the main provider, where are they headed? Right. So... Um We'll consider cable as the uh, conduit for your content, right? It used to be that if you wanted to get content, it has to come through the cable TV mm -hmm. channel. And, in fact, if they can't get your favorite shows, then you have to petition them or, or find out how to get them. Maybe you can go to a satellite provider as an right. alternative. I've been there. I've been there. Right. Well, today with the digital revolution, we know that the distribution channels have been disrupted. So mm -hmm. we know that you don't have to have a physical cable to get that content. You can get it on your phone over the air, 
You can get it through a regular internet pipe. You can get all that content in a way that you actually would look at it on a high definition screen and not be able to tell it's not uh, from cable. So channels like Nickelodeon, like ESPN, which you probably love, right, and I love, local news, Home and Garden TV, USA, TNT, all of those things, Fox News, how do you get that content if you cut the cable? That's a great question, and that's kind of the thing that I'm asking here because, uh, again, I want to see live sports. Um, I want to watch uh, the local news. When I when I remember going through the whole process of, of going from cable to dish and then going from dish to mm-hmm. direct TV. So I've had those three providers. I've had cable, I've had dish, and I've had direct TV. Mm-hmm. And because of the Internet provision, that's why I stick with uh, the cable system uh, right now. But you can talk me out of it, man. Yeah, I mean, you can get rid of the uh, subscription piece for the content. So you can keep the Internet mm-hmm. from your cable provider, okay. and you can get rid of the cable channels per se. So yeah, uh, will they the, frown on that though, or no? They, oh, yeah. Well, so I did it. It's your, it's their business. It's your business, right? Yeah. Now they can still raise rates on on the internet, and they do slowly, right? Mm-hmm. But you're not paying uh, extra fees, right? The FCC fees. You're you're paying a different um, option. In fact, I bought my own cable modem, so they dropped the ten dollars a month that they were charging for that modem. You mean the the little box? Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I paid forty dollars okay. for it. So my return on investment was in four months. I mm-hmm. equaled what you know. They, they would have charged per month. Now, the best way to save money, of course, is to not have any cable, right? Or not watch any TV. But we know that's not realistic, <laughs> right? So, well, there are folks that don't watch television, but I get you. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So sure. if you want to get these channels back, so there's a couple of different ways. One is very simple. And let's say you don't want to pay for Internet. You don't want to have any cable um, subscription costs. You're going to go zero. Get everything free, right? We know that there was a digital mandate so that you can't even get TV over your uh, over the air without a digital tuner, right? We know that happened a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, I remember that, sure. The great thing about that is that everything is broadcasting digitally. So you can get something known as an over-the-air antenna. And these things are not very expensive. You can get something like the, the Mohu Leaf for about 30 bucks. It's okay. like a flat white sheet of paper with a cord on it that attaches to your TV. You literally stick it on a window and it will start gathering those over-the-air channels, okay. you will get high definition that looks better than your cable television. Okay, so back up here, back up. You're telling me that what I'm paying uh, uh, $40, $50, $60 a month for, uh, from a quality perspective, I can knock it up a notch for free. After I purchased uh, the, what did you call it again? Over-the-air antenna. Over-the-air antenna. So I, does that have a short name? Is there an acronym for that? OTA. There you go. I yep. knew it was one there. And that's not uh, football... Um, <laughs> Football preseason. That's work. the workouts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know what happens here is you know you've got that antenna option. You've also got an antenna option for forty dollars or fifty dollars on Amazon that looks like one of those traditional antennas you'd see on somebody's roof. Mm-hmm. I remember now you'll those. get more channels that way. So you, I get uh, in in my part of Lake County, I get about 40, 40 channels. Okay, and these so, are all free. Okay. High definition. Now, I'm not going to get an ESPN or... But are they Garden local, TV. though? You're getting the local yeah. uh, 358, 1943, those, yep. those channels. I'm getting all those. I'm getting MeTV. I'm getting a bunch of different uh, religious channels. I'm getting Spanish channels. I'm getting uh, children's content well, back up. channels. You, MeTV, is that all about you? Tell me about that one. Sanjay Network? Help me out, brother. It's... Um, um, it's comedy shows, okay. old comedy shows. I'm, I'm totally Great kidding. shows, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Sanjay it's Network, like, welcome to. <laughs> it's like YouTube, but uh, me too. No, so, you know, you're getting that through over the air. Sure. We took, we didn't want an antenna on our uh, rooftop. Okay. So I went into my attic, which has, you know, some open space. Mm-hmm. As far as I could, I went on a website called antennaweb.org. Put that and down, guys. Antennaweb.org. And I put in my address and it showed me where to point that antenna to get the most uh, channels. And so I put that up there. It's a forty dollar antenna. I ran the cable down to, you know, distribution box, you know, kinda like the cable company does, to send that cable signal internally to the rest of the TVs in my house. I get about forty eight really good channels. I get about ten that come in sometimes or not. Mm-hmm. And I get that free. And it's crystal clear, it's crisp. It is the channel surfing ex- experience that you're used to when you watch cable, just different channels. So from a quality standpoint, many people complain about their providers, um, <clears throat> be it a, a digital satellite or be it a cable. Uh, I, honestly, I don't have a whole lot of interruption with, mm-hmm. with my signal, but um, there are folks that complain of that. So are, are you telling me now that if I choose to go with the OTA or mm-hmm. some other option, 
that the clarity will be as good or better than what I'm already experiencing. Yeah, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. You're so, an advocate. Yeah. The only thing that you're going to lack is the variety of things. You're not going to get your... Um, you know, your ESPN or your Nickelodeon or HGTV. So how do you get those things? How do you get the shows that we're all accustomed to and used mm -hmm. to, right? We'll mm -hmm. get the local channels. That's cool. I'm going to get incredibly good quality if I've got a new TV. So there's a couple of ways to do that. So we've all heard of Netflix, right? So Absolutely. that's one option. Mm -hmm. All of these options that I'm going to talk about now will require an Internet connection because everything's coming through the Internet instead of the cable company, right? It's the actual... Uh, internet pipe that's bringing it in. So Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, mm -hmm. Crackle, these are all services that are about eight or nine bucks a month. So you have to choose wisely, otherwise you're going to subscribe to all of these and you're going to pay the same amount you'd be paying cable. <laughs> so you got to be a little bit careful. And there's probably redundancy with them as well. There is. Okay. So my family, we have Netflix and Amazon Prime. So you get a lot of free things on Netflix, a lot of free things on Amazon Prime. You can download things or buy them or rent things for two to three dollars if you want to watch a movie okay okay so there's something new though that's pretty interesting for you sports lovers right so if you want to have espn you know a lot of complaints about cable packages are that i'm going to get 300 channels but i only watch two or 11 yeah or 11 mm -hmm. if you're yeah right so espn home and garden tv maybe usa or cnn fox news whatever it is why should I pay for all of these things? And there's been some complex licensing schemes and everything. So there's a company called Sling TV mm -hmm. that says, look, pay us 20 bucks a month. We'll give you 65 channels. And a lot of these are the ones you love. ESPN, ESPN2, American Movie Classics, Food Network, A&E, HGTV. So for $20 a month, you can get a package where you just get the channels that you want. So that's but quite the, a good option. And it depends on my Wi-Fi, though, correct? Wi-Fi or your internet. So you got to have internet. It okay. doesn't have to be Wi-Fi. It could be cable. You know, a lot of these smart TVs have a direct cable plugging okay. in because that's yep. much better. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at 20 bucks plus your $40 a month cable or an internet subscription. And for $60 instead of maybe 110 or 115 you're getting quite a bit of all the channels that you really want. So um, really good stuff. Now, you need an internet connection, but you also need something else. You need a mm -hmm. device that can connect to these things. So you need a smart TV, which is something that... You know, started to come out four or five years ago. Right, right. A smart TV. You need something called a Roku box, R O K U or Roku, Roku depending yep. on, on your mm -hmm. your region. Vernacular. Uh, an Amazon Fire Stick, thirty nine dollars. You can get that, plug it into your TV, um, and get those uh, smart things. Also, an Apple TV, seventy nine dollars. You can get Apple TV content. It can get you Netflix and all of these things. So, quite a bit of interesting options. I'm actually going to bring in, and we're going to have on our show in mm -hmm. the second half after we come back from break. Uh, a family, um, <laughs> ranging from four years old to I can't tell you how old the mom is. And uh, they're going to come in and they're going to talk about um, their experiences cutting cable. What's interesting, too, to tie in with that is the thought of you, you mentioned all these options that we have. I think that they're a little overwhelming for the normal Joe to know about all these options. So let's make it simple for everybody. And as our theme show, our theme of our show is let's learn together. Uh, let's learn some some great things together. So we're going to come back here uh, and we'll be uh, joined by the Parker family helping us out through the next segment here. So again, thank you for tuning in for the first couple minutes here on Tech Talk 2020. We will be back after after a little break. Thanks, everyone. Brian Chevrolet, we service all makes and models of cars and trucks. No matter what you drive, foreign or domestic, our technicians can keep your vehicle in top shape. Major repairs, tires, or a quick oil change, we can take care of you at Pat O'Brien Chevrolet. Consider the spring. No, not the season, the bed spring. A carefully engineered spiral of strength, putting all of its efforts toward one goal, support. Support of your back, neck, and knees. This is Ron Trzinski, the original Mattress Factory. What makes a great spring? Memory. A really great spring is like an elephant. It never forgets. It's always there providing support right where you need it, night in and night out. At the original Mattress Factory, our 
mattresses are crafted with American-made springs and fine cotton padding to create a quality sleep system for hundreds less than the national brands. Every detail of an original sleep system is as important to us as the values that this company was founded upon. And we put those values into everything we do, including the way we treat you, our customer. So consider the spring and then consider the original mattress factory. To learn more, visit us on the web at OriginalMattress.com. Out of your car or away from your radio? No problem. Download the free TuneIn app at TuneIn.com. Type in WINT and click Add to Favorites. Now you can listen to all of WINT's great shows on any Apple or Android smartphone or tablets 24-7. Hiring a landscaper sounds like a good idea. You won't have to do all that work. But will they show up and do a good job and clean up afterwards? Can you trust them around your property? If it's Ward's Lawn Care and Landscape, those answers are all yes. George Ward is one of our community's good guys, and his workers reflect his values with quality and dependability. With Ward's, you can stop working and stop worrying. Visit wardslawncare.com or call 440-942-1912. No work, no worries, Ward's. Welcome back to Tech Talk 2020. I'm here with Sanjay Parker, who's a little bit busy right now. We're so glad you guys came back to us. Hey, you can tweet at us at Tech Talk 2020 or hit us up on our Facebook page, which is also Tech Talk 2020. We are talking today about cutting your cable, but not literally cutting it. Right, just metaphorically. And today in our laboratory, I have brought <laughs> in a real live family that actually survived and is thriving, I think on a cord cutting strategy that started about 18 to 24 months ago. I was going to say, how long have you guys been clean? Mm -hmm. It's been a couple of years. It's and, tough. It's and, tough. I know. Yes. And so I have, <laughs> I have with us Kinsey Parker, and she's four years old. I have Paxton Parker, who you'll see in here in a moment, and he's seven. And I have my wife, Nicole, who's going to talk to us about um, her experience as well. And I will tell you, it was a... Um, challenging conversion initially and um, you know I learned a lot from from that so just uh, on, a, on, a, on a quick basis so we have at home we have um, an Apple TV box as I mentioned we've got uh, Amazon Prime and Netflix and a smart TV and that's really it and so all our contents access through there uh, or the internet so we we've moved fully to um, a modern on-demand setup so uh, I'm gonna talk to Kinsey first she's four she's gonna be five very soon and she's uh, of the generation where she's just used to getting what she wants when she needs it in, in all things, including her content <laughs> on, on TV. So, Kinsey, do you want to tell us some of your favorite shows? Yeah. What do you like to watch, honey, on TV? Oh, well, say it in the microphone, right there. All right. We didn't practice that part. Okay, okay. <laughs> what you, um, remember Sophia? Do you like Sophia the, Sophia the First? I've never heard of that one. So. All right, all right. Okay, all, all right. right, we can come back to her. Now, Paxton, you want to come over here? And Paxton's seven. And so he's really my, my tech aficionado. He's a digital native. He's used to changing inputs and changing, you know, devices, getting them to stream and everything. So, so Pax, can you talk about uh, what your favorite shows are? I like Pokemon, um, Transformers. Robots in Disguise. Pac-Man. <laughs> and a lot of other stuff. Got it. So can you tell us about how, how you get to your content? Let's say you want to watch something. Um, where would you get uh, Pokemon? So how would you do that? I would go on Netflix, and then I would click a button, and then I could watch it whenever I want. But how do you get on Netflix? What do you have to do first? You have to go, you press home, mm -hmm. and then you... Click net Netflix. It's on the top, <laughs> and then you and then you select the thing anytime you want. I got an idea. I got an idea. I think Pax should come over to our house right. and show me how to do these things. I think <laughs> I think we should learn a whole lot from him. Someday when we take callers, maybe the tenth lucky caller will get Pax to come in and show them how to use all of that <laughs> cool stuff. Now, what about when mommy and daddy? This would be good for you, Mike. When we want to watch uh, the Cavs game, uh, how do we how do we get to the Cavs game for live content? Um, we go on AirPlay with 
an iPad, and then we put the TV <laughs> on HDMI 4, <laughs> and then it'll come on. All right, and then we do what? We put it on the iPad, and we airplay it. Did you say that? Yeah. Yeah. You did. I missed that part. Okay. Yeah, so awesome. So this is a digital native, and so... Um, tell you me about describe digital native. Yeah, digital native is somebody who grew up with technology and they're used to getting content on demand. So, here's a question for you, Pax. So, does this sound like a, a fun time? So, imagine a world where you have to watch a TV show at a certain time, and if you're five minutes late, you're going to miss five minutes of that show, and you'll never be able to see it again. And that's it. Is that wah, something wah, that, wah. that sounds like? <laughs> is that something that sounds normal, or is that kind of what? What? What are you thinking? What's your reaction to that? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, you're used to getting content when you want it, how you want it, and how many times you want to watch it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the expectation that you have. Are you okay? Do you think that there's more shows or something that you're missing or anything that you need out there that you can't get? Mm, not really. No. Nope. And there you have it. There's a digital native who's very happy at seven years old with... The total cable cut. All right. Thank you, Pax. Very helpful. Now, <laughs> my most prized convert is my wife, Nicole Parker. And I will tell you, she doesn't watch a lot of TV, but when she is ready to, she loves to sit down after a long day of doing a million things, helping the community, taking care of the kids, keeping her husband happy and um, engaged and, no easy and all the house stuff. When she sits down, she wants to channel surf. She does not want to mess with a lot of things. So how was that transition for you? Well, I will tell you that um, I did miss my HGTV. That is um, my favorite thing to watch is HGTV. Oh, okay. Um, but like like Sanjay said, we're n- we weren't really huge TV watchers to begin with. Right. But um, And it was frustrating at first because I couldn't figure out where I needed to watch what. Um, but there's probably a couple nights a week that we watch TV, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, yep. maybe one or two nights a week. And so um, I couldn't. I, for example, I didn't know what show Netflix was presenting, or Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. or um, not Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah, Amazon Prime Video. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was so, probably the biggest challenge. So I think that was the biggest part of it. How do I know where to go for what? Right? Yes. It's like, hey, I used to be able to go to channel 118 to get Home and Garden TV. Sure. Now who moved my cheese? Right? Is this on Amazon or is this on Netflix or do I have to go online? And that was a little bit of a challenge. Mm-hmm. Right now we're seeing a convergence of a lot of these things where you can get it both on Netflix or Amazon Prime. You can do a lot of you know things and, and get some redundancy. One thing this has helped us with, though, we don't do a lot of this, but we know it happens, and, and we do it sometimes, binge watching. We were never mm-hmm. able to watch. So, you know, uh, one of the shows that we might watch is, is Prison Break. We really like that show. Our, our student who's with us um, from Austria, she kind of discovered it for us. And we want to watch two shows or three shows at a time instead of waiting one week in between. And I couldn't imagine some of these episodes where – you have to wait a week. You're going to forget what happens in between. <laughs> I know. It's like it's a not. culture change because <laughs> I know that how we grew up, you know, you just pick a series. What was it? Rich Man, Poor Man, The Thorn Birds, The Jeffersons. Uh, uh, not Jeffersons. What am I thinking? Just just any of the well, miniseries. Really that you Rich right Man. What's that? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm over the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's very interesting how, uh, again, a culture change in technology has kind of uh, lifted or, or brought a change that uh, – you know, it looks at it looks kind of foreign to me that all oh, those things uh, are happening now. So, Pax did mention that uh, you know he, he's ready to watch when he what he wants to watch right away. I truly remember missing the first five minutes of the Flintstones and being terribly upset. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to see it till reruns. Right, came. no DVR. Fred right. Barney, come back. <laughs> right. Where are you, what Wilma? happened? I missed Wilma. that key conversation. Wilma. How did Fred get fired again? I missed it. <laughs> Mr. Slate, I love yeah, him. Yeah, but I do. All right. <laughs> so yeah. rabbit trails, baby. I will tell you the best part, though. The best part is saving the money. Okay. So that's always good. We saved probably, probably over a thousand a year, and um, has it been three years? It's since been about two it. since we started. I yeah. Just three, honey. Wow. Okay. Well, see, that way. requires that, that requires change, though. Change, change. I keep trying to tell you guys. Nobody likes change but a wet baby. 
<laughs> that's, that's one of my jokes. Mm-hmm. But but interesting enough, I mean, I think everyone you know that collects a coupon or is embracing a whole coupon life can yeah. understand that if you do this and do this and go through that process, that savings will, will will manifest itself, and you appreciate it. Yeah, and the other part of the mentality is look. You know, we talked about cars uh, being a service, right? It's, it's your second most uh, expensive investment in most cases. And you're only spending one hour a day driving it. It sits for 23 hours a day in a garage or a parking garage. Sure. Why buy a car, right? A lot of people are saying that, younger generations. Today, you know, you've got 180 or 300 channels. You watch 11, but you might only spend an hour or two a day. Why are you paying for 24 hours of feeds for a whole bunch of channels that you're not going to use? There's our questions, but we culturally are so used to that. So one of the things I thought was going to happen on cable, I'll be real quick about this, is I thought eventually you would have an opportunity to have a menu and have a smorgasbord. They offer 300 channels, but say I only wanted 17. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see something like that happening? Not with the traditional cable networks because of the license agreements and the way they do it. Uh, But you're seeing it with Sling TV and some of the newer providers that are saying, look, we have a need here. We're losing opportunity. And now, you know, where the cable providers, the pipe used to be the most important. They could control who gets into the homes or not, right? Sure, sure. They can control the deals. They can say, look, we're only bringing you. You can come in. That's how everything started. Today, everybody can go direct, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, different companies can come out. The content houses are saying, look, we're not going to miss out on this opportunity. Sorry, cable company. We're not going to go exclusive with you. We're going to allow other companies to provide this as well because content is king. Good content will be lifted to the top, and the people have spoken. i got a quick question for you, too, before we depart here. Let me ask you this. How many different choices do we have? I mean, we have cable. We have the antennas that you offered. And then there's the satellite choices. Via the Internet, there must be how many different opportunities? Yeah, there's so many. And if you stick with the, the known entities, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, uh, Spark or Crackle and Hulu, then you're going to be pretty good. You know, it's roughly about eight bucks a month. You get a lot of content. There's some overlap, but there's a lot of differences. Um, you can get into some gray areas, though. People are using something called Xbox Media Center, which has a, a variant called Kodi, K O D I. Yeah. And while that technology is legal and is uh, good, what a lot of people are doing is they're selling these devices that you can get on the internet for you know, 80 bucks where you plug it in and it's bringing in all the content you normally would pay for, people don't know that that's illegal. So you got to be careful with some of that stuff, right? And so Cody is actually going legit. They're a really good programming team. They have a great product. People are using it in a way that wasn't intended and they're not responsible for it. So they're forging deals to bring in content packages as well. All this stuff is giving me a gentle headache. It's too much. It's too much. So here's what I want you to do. If you're out there, you're listening to our program today, and this is blowing you away. There's so many options. Make sure you tweet at us at Tech Talk 2020 or hit us up on our Facebook page at Tech Talk 2020. We have so many people that have joined, and they are now liking us. It's cool. And just hit us with the questions. They should be awesome because Sanjay's answering them, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let's keep it real. And thanks for joining. Next week, part three, our final installment in our personal tech series. We're going to talk about virtual reality headsets. That's going to be so awesome. Oh, Thanks, everybody, for joining today. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Tech Talk 2020. We'll be back next week. In the meantime, again, if you have any questions about our about some of this great table, uh, cable or Internet <laughs> or television stuff we've talked about, hit us up on Tech Talk 2020 on our Facebook page. We would love to uh, hit you back with some responses. Thanks for listening again. This is Tech Talk 2020 on Integrity Radio, uh, WINT, 1330 AM.